This video is made possible by the following sponsors. Make sure to check out their products as well as the rest of my gear in the description below. Hey guys, Hill Climby Boy here and welcome back to a set of Corsa for another video. So the other day after my scheduled period of self-despair, I went online to try and find some more ideas for some interesting content for you guys. It was then I stumbled across an article saying that Volkswagen want to take their record-setting Pikes Peak IDR all-electric race car to the Nürburgring to try and break the all-electric record. And of course, as you guys know, the car that holds the overall lap record for the Nürburgring Nord Cypher is this, the Porsche 919 Evo. So I thought, what if we played some swapsies? So here I am, I've brought the simulated Porsche 919 Evo to simulated Pikes Peak. That sounds really boring when you say it like that. Now on paper, it's really a done deal. This Porsche 919 Evo is one of the fastest cars ever to grace a racetrack, but therein lies the problem. This is not a racetrack, this is a mountain road essentially. Despite the fact that I've put in a ton of practice and that I've been playing with the setup for pretty much all that time, I still can't quite get this car handling right over the bumps. That plus the hairpins are a big challenge because this car really doesn't have much steering lock. Regardless, our time to beat is a 757.148, so uh, let's go get it. It's always good to be back in the 919 Evo because I know that I'm going to be sweating after I've finished driving it. We're right now just at the bottom of the hill climb. Uh, usually we have a bit more of a run up than this, but uh, to be honest, this car gets up to speed incredibly quickly. So I'm going to give the Volkswagen a bit of an advantage and not allow myself a run up. Now I've already lost count of the amount of takes I've done to try and get up this Pikes Peak hill climb in one piece. I am really very much struggling with getting this car around the hairpins towards the top of the course the car just does not have enough lock and you're going to end up just very slowly running into a wall so i'm going to give it one last go one last bite of the cherry and hopefully put in a decent time that you guys will find at least entertaining to watch anyway let's put it in first gear line it up hit the boost button and here we go then porsche 919 evo at pike's peak already up to 250 kilometers an hour before averting my eyes from a steering wheel and back to the road can't really afford to be looking at the steering wheel for this first section it's incredibly fast through here as you're seeing fifth gear out to the armco sweep back in and then we get into the first of the medium speed corners there are a lot of medium speed corners down the bottom here that are kind of mixed in with the high speed stuff which is quite deceptive and means it's very easy in practice when you're learning circuit to get mixed up get lost and end up in the trees which i have done quite a few times as you can probably guess soft through here now it's the double left hander. We missed the first one pretty much and come in just for the second. There we go. That's about as tight as you can go without touching the grass on the exit. Now tight left hander here, but it's very important to get a good exit here because we get on the boost nice and early and come up to the first of many hairpins. Now look to the right. You're looking for a pole sticking out the ground. That is my braking marker. And there it is. Heavy on the brake. Straight line if you can. And into first gear. Nice and easy in the throttle for there. You see I just very soft and then back on the boost straight away we're coming up to a deceptively fast left hand you can go flat through here you don't think you can but there you can very nice and easy hello fire and hello ambulance and now up to 300 k's before mashing the brakes down here brakes are very important that left hand very easy to get that wrong and go off into the trees very easy just to clip the gravel on the inside of the circuit and that really upsets the car don't do that now the first of our mountainous style a hairpins and my attitude changes straight away soft through there feed the car in don't throw it in car does not respond to that now we come up towards a very tricky right left hander not tricky because the corners are hard but because you're not running any downforce saying that locked up the rear brakes and away in there my rear brake bias is starting to show a little bit and this left hander just goes on forever and ever and ever can't really see where the exit is there it is and now start to get back into the flow again but then guess what you're met by another hairpin easy on the way in as wide an angle as possible you cannot attack the apex of these corners with a shallow entry otherwise you will just not be able to make the corner it just does not happen again on the boost all the way up here now looking for my braking marker very important to get this right because the barrier ready to meet me if i get it wrong just about right there if anything a little bit fast on the way in but we just about managed to slow it down now a very clumsy section through here Lots of uh, blind, sharp corners that you don't see until you've already gone past them and into the trees behind them. Luckily, I know where most of them are down the bottom here now, so hopefully that won't happen to us. This corner here, faster than it looks, but still you have to be nice and slow. Trail break all the way in. Nearly went off into the gravel there on the left, and that would have been a crash easy. But just about managed to not do that. This left hand is very bumpy. Wait, wait, nice. Now one more hairpin before we get into what I consider the second half of the course 
Raskin very wide on entry there to try and give the car as much room on both entry and exit. It really needs it, it really does. Again, another long left hand here, late apex for this one. Just trying to see where it is, if so these damn pillars in the way. And now it's time to be brave. This section really rewards you if you're courageous. <laughs> Hello, shit! God, that bit is fast through there. You forget how fast this thing speeds up. I know that sounds like a very silly thing to say. It's like a blooming time machine, though. You're already doing... You look down, you're doing 200 miles per hour. It's like, oh, OK, that's nice. I'm not terrifying in the slightest. Now back on the power. We get on the brakes just after this little kink up here. So through the kink and then on the brakes. Roll it into the left-hander. Apply the throttle easily. And now we use the boost. This is a very, uh, very fast section, but very easy to get it wrong. So look to the right for your braking marker. Then brake a little bit earlier than that just to make sure we get through the corner. Now we get into the really difficult hairpins for this thing. We're seeing now the, the problem that, I'm having, that, I'm, that I possess, really. The, the car just does not want to do anything through here. This corner is faster than you think it is, but that bump on the inside there really ruins it for you. You can't take much speed through there. Again, back on the boost, and then we try and brake in the straightest line as possible through here. Scrub off most of the speed, then down to first for yet another hairpin. See how easy the car just wants to to slide across in the front and go out into the the rock on each side. You just do not want to do that. I've turned the TC down a bit to try and help the car turn somewhat, but uh, you still have the issue, unfortunately. So I find the best best solution is just to go very, very slow into these corners. It might not look fast. It might not look interesting, but it gets us through in one piece. That's what I'm interested in. Now, here is one of the most challenging corners to get through. It's very, very tight, so I'm going to go as far out wide as possible and turn in nice and slow. You see, even now, even now, there's just almost no chance of me getting through without having to slow to an absolute crawl. The same is true for this one up here, so we get on the brakes so, so early. Just aim for the apex, and still, you see, still, we can't quite get round. I'm going to have to hit reverse. I'm going to have to hit reverse. And there you go. That is not the, uh, not the, uh, the way you really want to do it. I could not find anything in the options to help increase the steering angle on this unfortunately and again look we're, we're, we're put into the same conundrum you know what fuck it off-road easy <laughs> easy every time but now it's hopefully where this car gets to start coming alive somewhat we have a couple more hairpins to go through then we get to go over the top of the mountain which as a lot of people know is incredibly quick you're just seeing how careful i'm having to be up here it really goes against the nature of this car this car wants you just to throw it around every corner with the utmost confidence but you can't up here you can't just not made for it so easy for this section wait wait and now we can start getting on the power a bit up to the top now this is what this car does well with where it gets its time back on the uh, on the overall timing it's on this fast section here i'm already up to 288 k's and flat through those corners like it's nothing but the corners do get tighter you're going to be very wary of where you are on the circuit so we get on the brakes a bit here get to the inside as, as quick as we can just to make sure i don't understeer off if you understeer off here you go off you're off the mountain that's it you're, it's over so it's better to err on the side of caution i believe that's just me though and again up to speed using the boost a little bit here oh the car wanting to go over the edge there i kind of lost where i was for a second now we come into one of the most deceptive hairpins there because you're going really quickly and then suddenly you're introduced to this hairpin and you think let me now guys give me a break i'm not sure how our time is looking so far but it's something it's awful Again, very tight for this section up here. Tighter than you think it is. So I'm having to be so, so careful. Ah, just about managed that corner, just about. You wanted to get on the power, but you can't. And again, I, ah. Being just so careful, I've not got any confidence over the top at all. This is the fervence I've got for a long time, so I'm kind of eager to get this, get this done on the brakes. I'm just looking for the markers on the left, those little boards kind of let you know that you need to slow down a bit. So, so slow up here, so cautious, the confidence from the bottom of the course has just all left me. We're at 7.25, there's still a chance we can do this. Only a couple of corners left, I think. Just try and remember where I am, I can't remember where I am. It's so tight up here, come on, go! It's so damn deceptive it's going to be very close indeed come on on the boost i'm pretty sure this is the last corner and it's a 750 and off we go to oblivion 
I'm pretty sure I just missed out on the record by about a second. And that time is definitely there. That time is definitely there, but I just didn't have the confidence in me. I'm going to very quickly just take off the headset and check that 750 is definitely not the record. But um, bear with me two seconds, I'll, t I'll take a look. Oh, wait, the record was 757. I did beat the record. I beat it by seven seconds. Oh, man. I thought I didn't beat it there. I thought that I'd just, just be shy of it because of how bad I was at the top there. But there is definitely a lot more time in this car. But to beat the 757 is uh, is my goal for the video achieved, so I am damn happy with that. But guys, I know that was far from a perfect run, so I'd love to hear what kind of times you guys are capable of. Uh, let me know in the comments below. But if you enjoyed the video, of course, make sure to hit that like button. If you really enjoyed it, hit subscribe to be notified of future videos. And again, a massive, massive thank you to my patrons and to my sponsors. And all of those of you who came to watch the last part of our 24 hours of Daytona, we broke our concurrent viewer record. We hit 7,000 people watching at one time on the live stream. It was absolutely insane. And uh, again, you guys made that happen. So you have my eternal thanks. Take care. Have an awesome day. I'll see you all next time.